these are the three approaches to Torah that come as a corollary as a result of the idol worship. The idol worship doesn't negate God, but it makes God into someone that's got to intervene or validate or object to an interpretation, but what it means in terms of our daily behavior, we can modify the Torah. We can either modify through interpreting it differently, to initiating new concepts, or making our own rules up as we go along because we are God's officials here on earth. We are rabbis. Rabbis have got the power to initiate new ideas. All of these three approaches are found in the various communities. The first approach, most closely to reform Judaism. They make up their own rules. They f do not feel compelled to follow the halacha. The Torah was only, if it was given, was only meant to give us a general overall picture of how what kind of a world God wanted. But the details, we can fill in us because we have our own, our own independent thought. We're like the officials, God's officers, officers of the court who can initiate our own thought process. Second approach is very close to the conservatives. The Torah is the Torah, but we can initiate changes that God can validate and validation comes from the ritual committee we can initiate things we don't change them completely it's not completely that we're given freedom of truth but we can initiate things along the lines of what we see we can add or subtract get rid of a mechitza if it's not comfortable we can add a microphone and permit driving on Shabbat we can initiate laws that are similar to the original laws. But God has to validate them. Since God is not going to intervene, we're going to have the committee vote on it. The third way is the way of some modern thinkers. You would call them modern orthodox, so you would call them orthodox light go into the law and base the law upon certain preconceived notions and come to conclusions as to what the spirit of the law is and therefore will make conclusions that may or may not be congruent with the traditions of the Jewish people. Because when you interpret the reason for the law, then the halacha will either become stronger or weaker. There will be more tradition or less tradition, all depending upon how you see the spirit of the law. All three approaches are dangerous. And it is for that reason that Moses was allowed to smash the luchas, the tablets. How is he? able to smash the tablets, they didn't belong to him. They belonged to God. And the answer is, they belonged to God, but they were given to Moses to give to the people of Israel. But if the people of Israel are worshipping idols, and they think that they can make up their own rules, giving them the Torah is downright dangerous to them, or even allowing them to initiate their own rules, or to reinterpret the law. All of these things make it dangerous for them, because then they can interpret, initiate, um, or set up new laws that are totally unlike the intent of the Creator, and this can be tragic for their own survival. When a person has something that is dangerous to the community, you have
have to get rid of it. For example, if you have a beautiful 125-foot ash tree, magnificent tree, with a wide base, beautiful leaves, and the tree is being eaten by bugs, and the tree is at the end of your properties, your property line, which is about 25 feet from the thoroughfare, from where people walk and drive. And if your tree were to fall into the thoroughfare, you don't know how many people you could injure, or God forbid worse. And so the rabbis come and they inspect the tree from time to time. And they've now determined that your tree has got the bugs that are eating it up inside. And at one point, this tree will fall. And it may fall directly into the public domain. The rabbis give you a warning. You don't heed that warning. Rabbis come again and see that the infestation is worse. They give you a second warning, perhaps. Perhaps they don't. But at the most, they'll give you three warnings. And then what will happen is someone from the community will come with a chainsaw and chop your tree down. Oh, wait a second. How did you do that? How can you go ahead and take my private property away from me? The answer is called Hefker, Besden, Hefker. The court can negate your ownership. You know why? Because your ownership is dangerous for the lives of others, to the lives of others. The Torah, given these people with their ideology, was dangerous for their children. It could be worse than the tree falling because the tree will only hurt people when it comes down. But when you have a faulty Torah, when you go ahead and you can interpret the Torah as you want, then that false interpretation not only kills this generation, but future generations. We are all children of one father, one father, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Three fathers, but each one of us is a descendant of Jacob, who's a descendant of Isaac, who's a descendant of Abraham. And we all share a common history and a common purpose. And we share a common Torah. But we can't do whatever we want with the Torah. We can interpret it, but we can't change the rules. Interpret as you wish, but you can't modify or change the rules. Good job.